The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Mean Advice Show for the Modern Era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middle oldest brother, Travis McElroy. And my name is Griffin McElroy, the youngest of the three brothers. The lips, the teeth. The lips, the, tip of the, the tongue. teeps. The teeps of the tea. I'm so excited to be here um because i've been dying to ask somebody a question about game of thrones and i think you guys you guys watched it right Um, oh yeah mm, i actually you know i'm very vocal on facebook about how i don't watch it because of uh you know the i don't like i don't go so much for fantasy except for the fantasies of babes i have when i um lift so much weights at the gym that i fall asleep you can ask me any question, Travis, and the answer is going to be, we the fans have had enough. Mm. Okay, well, I I stopped watching about, I think it was like halfway through season three. That's oh. Two and, and a half so, seasons too much, according to we the fans. So I need you to catch me up on what happened, but I don't want you to spoil anything for anybody who is going to watch it. So if you could just get me from about the middle of season three to the end of the series without spoiling anything for right. the people at home. That would be Just great. sort of broad strokes. Yeah, like, just broad general, stroke it for me. Okay. Well, I'll tell you I'll tell you as much, Trav. Uh-huh. For a song of ice and fire, there sure wasn't very much singing being done. Okay, that's there was why. Re- I'm gonna was, let me write I, that. I'll slow down. I have to write it down. There were like eighty episodes or something in this piece of shit. And as far as I can remember, there was only like one scene with singing in it. So Okay. George, don't call it what you're going to call it. I would disagree with you there because he didn't call it Songs of Ice and Fire. You said there was one scene with ah, singing. Ah, fuck, you're right. Fuck, you got me. All right, idiots. Here's okay. the thing. Ed oh. Sheeran in it. <laughs> and he didn't sing, which is like his whole thing. Okay. Drummer from Coldplay in it. He was in it? Sigur Ross from Friends? Uh-huh. He's in it. Ross from Friends is in it? <laughs> Sigur Ross from Friends. Are these problems for you, Just I've sort of lost the plot on where you're. Chris Stapleton to is yeah. a country singer. He in it. Okay. Are, is that making you mad, though? Are you not Aaron like that? Rogers you... in it. So we the fans, do we like that or do we not like that? We the fans it? are fed up and okay. we've had enough. This is my petition. That I. It's an audio petition. Now several hundred episodes in the making. Uh-huh. It is an audio petition that I am submitting for Game of Thrones. To what? Do it again. To do the whole show again. To do it, do again. it again. Like a reboot or just start yes. all over? Yes, start all okay. over with a fresh take. Some of the things will be the same. The cool shit. <laughs> okay, so keep, keep the good stuff. Like, if, cool if you remember during my extensive, extensive uh, sardonic recap podcast lame of thrones and then in every episode in the i call it the roundup at the end of every episode like okay there was one fucking cool shit thing yeah those are the things that should remain the same all other things should change yeah there were like three times throughout the series where a dude's skull just got Fully fucking crushed by a big man's hands. So super yeah. cut that shit together. That's the Keep series that. for for all the skull Justin, crushing. I've, as I said earlier, I've been out of touch uh, with no with shit. the fans for a while now. Yeah, we the Is fans it, miss you. By the way, oh, I'll come back. Is it that you, the fans, want it to be sillier or hell yeah, and fucking sexier mm, and okay. more ads? <laughs> <laughs> That's the main fucking problem. I can't even get up to use this shitter because this shit doesn't take a break. 
Oh, I thought you meant like native advertising. Like, Both, obviously. Well, we, well, okay. well, let me just say. Uh, I love say, these dragons as much as I love flaming Hot Cheetos. They for sure already have the native advertising thing covered in real as Game of Thrones. So let's, that. I'll delete that joke. It's Circle gets the square. It's a little too on the nose for my taste. What do you mean? There's, you know, a scene, there's a scene in Game of Thrones where they're driving a Ford truck across the the like icy wasteland? Well, no, there's just like, you know, the Starbucks cup was very It funny. wasn't from Starbucks. Uh, we the fans thought it was from Starbucks, and then we the fans learned it's from a local coffee shop. And also, my queen, Danny, doesn't drink it. She drinks herbal tea. She gets to be in the reboot, but okay. doing more cool shit. And she didn't have no powers. <laughs> She couldn't get burned up by dragons, and she had dragons, and that's good. Yeah, but she's badass. gonna have powers in the new one. Badass, which ones? Badass, dude. Uh, fucking lasers, Fuck invis, low. psychic blasts, nice. plasma blades. Yes, all of them, dude. She's Adamantium got all the powers. And she, yeah, she can give the powers to other people. Healing Fuck factor. Yeah. All right, let's get some. Let's put some ink on the fucking page now, okay? Because episode one, these two brother sister, they ain't boinking. Big time. I would change that, by the way. I would make them not related. Yeah, like, that shit nasty. Okay. Get that shit that right out. Note, but All I right. think it would be a lot more approachable if they were just like friends who were bony. It was yeah. so fucking gross that the people, and so lazy and sloppy, that the people what done wrote the book, George, I think the guy's name is, yeah. he didn't even realize that the same people he had screwing when the little boy went to the window to enjoy yes, it, yes. With the same people he had screwing were also the brother and sister from earlier. Yeah. Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah, that George, was just sloppy writing. My 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 sympathies to the creators of the TV show because they had to abide by that garbage. Yeah, it's like so embarrassing. I would so, also, um, in order, I I if I were going to rewrite the show, along with making it sillier, um, I would make the all the sex that happens in it way more uh, consensual. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's good. For that's sure. So, I love yeah, that. Yeah, 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 badass. Yeah, yeah, that part's yeah, yeah. badass. Yeah. So they're boinking on this tower, right? And they're boinking uh -huh. and they're not related. They're just like friends. Yes. But they shouldn't be boinking because they have other things going they're, on. They're late for a dinner date and they're boinking and people are waiting for them because they were supposed to meet a couple. Exactly. Another exactly, couple exactly. there. Yeah. So the boy grappling hooks up the tower and Zip. gets up in the window and is enjoying it. Whoa. And he's, he's like, cool, cool, cool. I'm a boy. I've never, I'm a little boy. I've never seen this. And then um, the one of the couple goes over and kicks the boy so hard he goes flying out of the tower. And keep that, keep that for sure. <laughs> and for that scene, we're actually going to just use the 300 kick. The kick yes. that they do in 300. So we'll just like literally take that footage. Every, and char every character in the first episode, every character is given a coin. Yes. And they can use the coin eight times to do <laughs> <laughs> to do a 300 kick. Yes. <laughs> and they get no more. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have to make those eight kicks <laughs> for the entirety of the series. Yeah. Exactly. And they can trade them to each other for they, goods and services. They can trade them to each other like in John Wick. They can trade <laughs> If you use up all your Spartan kicks, maybe you could babysit for your nephew and he'll give you one of his Spartan yeah. kicks. But I those have, are the rules. I have one other small change. Well, I just would let me make. just can I can I just just the boy goes falling in and you're like, oh no, he's he, he's dead. But then he comes up, he's on the roof of the DeLorean. Pretty badass. Yeah. Oh, I sweet. love that. I love that. I Fuck was yeah. gonna say Batman, but maybe Batman's driving the DeLorean. Yeah, with, 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 my the queen, DeLorean. with my queen and our queen, the fans queen. Uh, Daenerys Chirgin. Yes. And also, I don't know, maybe uh, Captain America's there? Maybe... Stop it. Now you're making jokes. Now you're making jokes at me. Okay, let's just go back to where Batman was driving the DeLorean, and he pulls up, and Bran... I think that's the name of the kid. Bran Flakes opens the door of the DeLorean. Um, but this time he doesn't hit... Uh, he doesn't hit what's his face uh, in that face. Like He just is like, hey, you accidentally kicked me off the tower. I, I could have died. Yeah, that was. And I was like, just oh enjoying. God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know how I get when I boink. Yeah, when I'm boink, I'm just flailing everywhere. <laughs> Legs akimbo. They waited a really long time to put dragons in it, so I'm yes. gonna have dragons in it from the beginning. Except they can talk and use ice lances. Ooh, cool. Yeah, yeah. and I think yeah. there's only like three dragons. I would <sighs> make there be like. 500, 600, maybe 500, maybe more. 600 dragons, and they reproduce at an uncontrollable rate. Yes. All the dragons are always pregnant in this one. 
Yeah. And they have to be hun- hunted to keep the population down. And I'd like That's to introduce right. a thing where in the big throne room in the mm-hmm. Red Keep, which we're going to find a way cooler name for, it was something like Blood Castle, Storm Th- nice. Mountain. Um, battle Battle Getting. Battle Getting. Oh, yeah. What? Battle Getting. Okay. Battle Getting. Battle Geddon. Battle Geddon. Battle the Geddon. The castle. The castle. Battle called, Geddon. Okay. The castle's called Battle Geddon. And then in the throne room, there's going to be like 16 thrones. And we'll Ooh, have the cool. I guess yeah. we'll have the sword one, but that shit's yeah. played. But they'll be on caster wheels, and you'll you, the king whatever gets to like push them, and whoever wants to fight him can like push the. And then if your throne gets knocked over or falls down the stairs, then it's out. <laughs> oh, I like that. I love maybe, that. Maybe uh, we make the throne a little more comfortable. There will be a plush throne for uh, yeah. sensitive bottoms. I, I think- also, and this is a little note, but I'd have the snake man beat the big rock man in that one fight. I didn't this- like that the snake man lost to the big rock but man. But Travis' head got crushed in such a cool way. That's the one badass thing about this oh, fucking shit, show. Oh, shit, you're dude. right. fucking cool thing that we will have. Oh, no, you're right. This one's got 16 thrones, but at the beginning, there's 17 people. Mm. And then after every round, they remove... One of the thrones. That's yes. an so important same yeah. mechanic. Yeah, and when, if you again, if you fall down the stairs, and that you get Arshal are out. Sigur Ross plays, and then eventually they stop playing. It could take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours, but when they stop playing, everybody tries to get into a throne, and then they after whoever doesn't have one is eliminated by blood. Yes, I love this. It's good, right? It's yeah. unlike. I guess. I guess we the people just need, and we the fans need uh if hbo would just sign off on it or respond to our emails and tweets and uh tumblers and stuff oh i sorry one more tiny note um i was gonna say more wolves but what if they're all wolves what if they all have the ability i thought oh there's a separate okay. coin there's a second coin there's a yes. second coin Yes, there's a second coin that allows you to transform into a werewolf 17 times. Yes. And you can all that's all you get for the whole TV show. Yes. So don't burn it one as a joke unless it's going to be hysterical. <laughs> yeah, if it's a really good joke, maybe. If it's so funny. Also, I would like to be a character in it. Not I would not like to play a character in it. Let me be clear. I Travis McElroy would like to be a character in it. Joe Mangiello plays Travis McElroy yes. in Game of Thrones 2. They back. I yeah. want to be. A, I want to make a cameo. I wouldn't mind uh, squashing Ed Sheeran's melon. Hey, listen <laughs> to this. Hey, listen to this. Here's your poster right here. Here's the poster. There's 500 to 600 dragons. Mm. Ed Sheeran, Sigur Ross, Aaron Rodgers, all in armor, loving it. The one guy is beating the other guy, mm. but on the other side of the poster. It goes the way it did originally. So both of those are depicted. Oh, it's just side by side? It, in the series, both outcomes are depicted. Cool. Choose your own adventure. Cool. Yeah, no, both I, of them happen. It's a little bit for everyone. Yeah, I, both of them happen yeah. in it. And they all win. Shit. And everybody wins in this one. And then at the bottom of the poster, it says, let the games begin. Kill. Dot, 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 again. Put yes. It in, put it it's in the It's good, hole. right? Let the games begin. Dot 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 again. Yes. Fuck. Yes. It's back. Let's do a question. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, Griffin. I'm sorry I got a little lost. I'm in the doctor's office waiting room. They just called my name, but someone else got up and went back. Oh man, I can't imagine that. Now it's been 20 minutes, and I'm the only one left in the waiting room except an old woman who was parked by the nurse's door to yell at everyone who goes in before her, you don't look sick. Do I go tell them I made, that they made a mistake? What if they're just busy? How long do I wait before I become the same as this old woman? I live here now, I suppose. That's from Darned in Denver. <laughs> That's, this, this feels like a piece of paper you find crammed between two stones in the doctor's office. Yeah. Uh, That's That's so hard because... It's really hard living in a society. We can all accept that. It's a common theme of our program, but it's especially hard when it just, it very clearly broke down on everyone. Yes. We, we can all agree that it broke down. And, and I don't know how you get out of that. When you, It's hard to admit to another person in the machine, like, hey, the machine's broke, and there's no recompense for that. 
There's this no is, way out of it. This fear that I, I will infer here that you're feeling because I have felt this many times, this fear of like walking up and say, oh, I think there's been a mistake. I think I was, and they're like, no, there's no mistake. You'll be back soon. Just sit back down. It's like 100%. Wait, oh God, there's oh God. no doubt in my mind that is 100% verbatim tone and everything they would sound like my brother that's how yes. sure i am that, that is the exact response you would a mistake, get. just sit down we're gonna call you in a minute and you're like oh no i have to go because it's the doctor right if the doctor's like uh we just let anybody back there no matter what name we call whatever it's all bullshit like the next like what else are they making up right, right. what else are they just like pulling out of their asses because you would think that if if they called your name if it was like you know dan and somebody else went back and they weren't Dan, that right. that mistake would be found out pretty quickly. Are they getting all your fungus medicine? What oh, if there's no. none left <laughs> left for you? Oh, because no. they're they're eating it for fuel. <laughs> eating all your fungus medicine and smuggling it out in their bellies. Now let the me say the other this. side of this too is also bonkers that if someone calls Dan and someone's like, Well, I'm Jim, but yeah, you know what? I'm going. I'm Jim, but I'm in a hurry. I'm Jim in a hurry. <laughs> uh, uh, flip side, the, there are worse places to live now. There are worse That's places true. to live. If you have a whoopsie, uh oh, you're very close to somebody who can patch that right up for you. I hope. And all uh, the highlights in, magazines you can all read. the highlights you can read. There's the goldfish probably, and then there's you have all those beads that you can push around on the little pipes. Gosh, those are freaking fun. The and hospital Sid works at has killer bacon. Yeah, and apparently, uh, you have a new friend. In a sounds like a very judgmental old woman. Yeah, let's get there. Let's get there. Let's get to her. Yeah, okay. what is she doing? That. Yeah, you that's, don't look sick. That sucks. Well, it might be a compliment. Oh. It might be like, hey, I, I want you to know you probably feel really bad right now. And oh, thank God you came in to take care of yourself. I listen, I appreciate it. I'm sure all your loved ones appreciate it. I want you to know, in case you were worried about it, you don't look sick. You, don't you look sick. look, you're not showing it. You, you look great. You look great. I hope you get better because I understand that sometimes illness is invisible. And I, I hope I'm glad you've taken care of yourself. This old woman is great. Yeah, I've she's good. I've yeah, I, I'm with Trav. This one kicks ass. <laughs> Did you think that brain. maybe she was a, a bad egg maybe for a little bit when you originally thought about it wrong? Yeah. Did you think that maybe she was kind of a bad egg? Yeah, like the, stinked, like the pigeon yeah. lady in, uh, in uh, Home Alone 2. You can't just start talking about Home Alone. But I'm just you saying, like, when you first, because Kevin first sees her, he's like, oh, no, she's a bad one. But then yeah. by the end, it's like, oh, no, she's actually very yeah. sweet. Right. At the end, when she kills two men by throwing birth seed at um, How about a question <laughs> from Yahoo? I'd love that, Griff. Here's one sent in by Graham. Roebuck, thanks, Graham. It's a non, it's, uh, no, I'm sorry. It's Yahoo Answers user Sebastian. Sebastian uh, asks, how to make boiled eggs smell bad quickly for school? Huh. I have Whoa. to I have to take care of a boiled egg for a week and I broke it. So now yes. I'm trying to make another one and it needs to smell bad so it's more believable. Why? For school. No, I understand. For school. But is is the question asker saying because I've had it for a week, it should smell like a week old boiled egg? Yes. Yes, okay. Trav. Yes, okay. Travis. I'm just wanting to make sure. Sort of I didn't even think that part was particularly complex or nuanced. So that, but that would imply that this question asker is afraid that when they turn in this fake boiled egg, this faux boiled egg, that the teacher is going to smell, smell it. it. Yeah, your teacher is going to get that egg and be like, oh, that's fine. You can put it in the trash. Yeah. Good work keeping it not cracked. Unless. But unless. Unless the teacher is a nasty. Oh. Give me that stink. <laughs> Let me think. Well, did, would you name your son? Yeah, it's Kenneth. Give me that stink, Kenneth. Give me that stinky egg. This one I, doesn't stink at all. No points. You know, now that Griffin said it, I cannot think of another reason that a teacher would think assigning you to take care of an egg for a week is anything. Yeah, you can <laughs> bury yeah, that shit it? in a hole in your yard and then dig him up one week later. Here he is, safe and sound probably. Yeah. I had to do it. Oh Yes, but what did it prove, Justin? It proved that I was ready to be a father. <laughs> <laughs> it is not can i say that is that is the object of the lesson right it's hard to be a parent here's an egg to take care of can you imagine how hard this would be one of the two things is going to happen 
One is the kid's going to do a pretty good job and be like, I'm ready to be a dad. I'm a very responsible 15-year-old. <laughs> that egg looks beautiful. I'm ready to be a dad. That's one option. The other one is, it, it like, you, the other problem with this is it is nothing like that. No. <laughs> it's yeah. nothing like it. Because it's nothing I can like take it. an egg home and put it in my sock drawer, grab it a week later, and turn it in and be like, yeah, I took it everywhere. I took care of it. But I can't do that with BB. Can't yeah. do it with them. Can't do it. Well, it just, on the inverse, you could have a kid who drops their boiled egg and it explodes when it hits the ground. And then, you know, a few years later, somebody's like, you ever think about having kids? And it's like, well, no, because I know if I did have one, I would drop it. It would explode as soon as it hit the ground. So. Maybe if a kid wouldn't explode, we probably shouldn't drop them. Maybe taking care of an egg is harder than taking care of a baby. Yep. Okay. Because babies can recover from a drop or two. Yeah. yeah. I'm saying my baby is surprisingly tougher than an egg. There, there is also the problem of like if you get really hungry while you're watching your child, it's probably not going to occur to you to scarf it. Yeah, probably it probably won't think yes. to scarf. And if the you child. do, you face way stronger punishment than just Quite like bad. an F. So I guess while you're handing it to him, uh, do a quick burp or fart right on it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Here's what I would do. I would put it in vinegar overnight. The mm. shell will, uh, the 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 acid of the vinegar is going to break down some of the shell. That's why we use vinegar when we're helping to color eggs, because uh, they break down some of the proteins of the shell. So so put it into vinegar. It's going to break down some of the shell, and it's going to absorb some of that vinegar smell, and it's going to have a real gnarly stink on it, like a real rough stink. Are you worried that that might go the other way, though, that when you try and, like, Hey, I'm glad you, I guess, kept your baby alive, quote unquote. But also, why your baby stinks so bad? Yeah. If and you I, have a stinky egg, that's out of your control. That's yeah. true. Take it up with the chicken, my man. I don't know what yep. to tell you. Ask the chicken stinky ass why it makes <laughs> such bad eggs. <laughs> I'm just playing with the cards I was dealt, chief. Yep. This is, the, this is the chicken's ass, not mine. It's your nasty assignment, Devin. <laughs> I'll, I'll see you Again. Fortnight later. <laughs> oh, please, it's Mr. Pearson. I will see you on Fortnight later, but please, it is Mr. Pearson at school. Fuck off, Devin. Okay. You're the boss. Another option is you can rub the egg up against um, <laughs> your mama's feet. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just got scorch mode. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> About three years ago, a colleague and I created a presentation for some high school students on behalf of the college where I work. The presentation involved handing out little pieces of dark chocolate. Nice. My then boss, who had a company credit card, bought the chocolate. We ended up with a lot left over, but I kept it in my office in case we ever did the presentation again. Well, now it's 2019, and I still have a bag of chocolate in my office that realistically is never going to be used. Neither my boss nor the pers other person involved in the project works here anymore, so no one else even knows they exist. The chocolates, when unwrapped, have a thin, dusty whiteness to suggest they are past mm, their prime. Yummy! I eat them occasionally. Mm. <laughs> Should I stop and save them for a future use that might never come? That's from the Coco Monster in Canada. Holy I, shit. I love that Holy when you say, shit. should I stop? The reason is to save them for some future use and not that they're over three years old. That they're molting, apparently. Well, like, that white dust before anybody tweets it, I believe it's called Bloom. And it's a thing that if you see it on there, it means you're not going to be able to temper that chocolate. It's not going to melt right. It's not going to temper well. But I don't think it means that it's bad. But I mean, also, I bet it has a bad taste of it. The flavor to it, I mean, yes. it seems like that part would be bad. And it seems like I don't know what what role the chocolate played in the presentation. Again, a vital piece of context. People, you have to tell us these things. We can't just guess. But I assume the chocolate was meant to be a positive, right? <laughs> the chocolate, the chocolate <laughs> in the presentation is a net reward. I would assume, and, and not, not a like, negative. Oh, you got it wrong. Eat this old ass dusty chocolate. Eat this old fucking baseball card chocolate. I, this I, foul chocolate. I do like this invasion scenario though, where like you, you know, you surreptitiously scarf all the chocolate, and then like six months from now, your new boss is like, "I remember uh, when I traded over this job with the old boss. They handed me a file folder that had very important for, and on one piece of paper was just written, you know, Susan has the chocolate in case we ever do the presentation again. I know it's been four years, but Susan, I assume you still have that chocolate like a responsible employee, and then you have to deal with the ramifications." 
of I, your scarf. Yeah, I think it. I I think that unless someone tells this is for my life, unless someone specifically says to me, "Don't throw this away." I'm trying to throw shit away constantly all mm-hmm. the time. I think it's completely valid, this idea that you would say, like, oh, I threw that shit away years ago. What are yes. you talking about? That's nonsense that you think I would still have that. No way. Yeah, your office is in a, a chocolate storage company, is it? Oh, wait. No. Unless it is shit. Okay, so now we have a, a, a hustle on our hands. People are going to walk in there and be impressed about how long you've kept your chocolate in there and they're going to be like well now I know a safe place to keep my chocolate and they turn it over to you and then all of a sudden um snack fest and you know what maybe that's how you get that big raise you've been angling for is when your boss comes in and is like we're probably going to have to spend money to buy chocolate again because we're doing that ah what a waste and you're like uh no actually uh step inside my my fudgematorium why don't you my Dr. Praetorium's fudgematorium step inside (laughs) lick the walls there's choco stains all over I see there's choco stains Mm, pretty much all over fun brand name it's pretty bad the fudge stains guys bad news what I I ate all my boss's chocolate and I don't have the money to buy new stuff oh let's buy some chocolate if we're gonna buy chocolate we need money let's go to my dog Bad news, criminals. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, hey, all you criminals listening, I know you're like, I can look at McElroy.family and click on tours and see when Travis is going to be out of town. But bad news for you, because I have Ring, and it's going to let me know if you try to break into my house, and then you're going to prison. Yeah. Also, I'm, I'm Judge Dredd. So I'll also, get you. Also, important get you. to note, and I've got a big dog and a little dog, but mostly the big dog is what matters here in this context. Uh, because here's the thing. I'm everybody. better than a dog. I'm judged. I'm just offended because I was like, I'm Judge Dredd and I protect my brothers. And you're like, but I've got a dog. But, but I, I have one a dog. F- no, I'm yeah, saying I'm it's, in addition to brother Judge Dredd, brother Dredd. Now I, now I have a big dog. Anyways, Ring helps you stay connected to your home anywhere in the world thanks to HD video and two-way audio features on Ring devices. It's one of my favorite things. If I'm somewhere and there's like uh, someone rings my doorbell, which is a Ring doorbell, or just like somebody walks up in my door, not only do I get a notification from my phone that says, hey, someone's at the door, uh, but it also gives me a chance to see who came up even if I miss uh, the notification, even if I miss uh, the ringing of the doorbell, and... I can talk. It's a two-way communication. I can say, like, oh, you can just leave that at the door or, like, no, thank you or whatever. It's a great way to answer the door even when you're not at home. I am a huge fan of it. Uh, I highly recommend it. I, I, Like I said, I have two. I have one on, on my front door and one on my back door. Um, one in if, his Parisian villa. And yes. dreads all over that one, too. So don't even fucking think about yeah, it. Yeah, and one of my Zeppelin. Criminals. Um, and if you want to check it out, as a listener, we have a special offer for you on a Ring Starter Kit available right now with a video doorbell and motion-activated floodlight cam. The Starter Kit has everything you need to start building a ring of security around your home. Just go to ring.com. It's R-I-N-G dot com slash my brother. That's ring.com slash my brother. Stitch Fix is the clothes one, and they have decided to support, uh, support us again. And so... I get clothes from Stitch Fix. I get lots there of them. There it is. Yeah, there um, it is. Boom. I get lots of them. They come in a box, and uh, they have a special person who has an eye out for me. And, they and are, they're in the box. They're in the box. They pick out my clothes, and then they ship themselves like a normal would do. And then uh, I get the clothes, and I try them on. And if I like it, then I can keep it. And they'll, they'll you know, charge me whatever for it. And if I don't like it, just put it right back in the in the bag and then send no that back deal. free of charge. No, it is no skin off my nose when Stitch Fix sends me the clothes. And so I think you should do it, too, because I enjoy doing this a lot. Every time I get a little box, it's like a little opportunity for uh, a fashion statement, a personal change, maybe. And also, I don't do laundry that often, so it's like, yes, this will get me through Friday. So that's very cool, too. So I want you to get started today at stitchfix.com slash my brother, and you'll get an extra 25% off when you keep all the items in your box. That's stitchfix.com slash my brother. One more time, in case you didn't pay attention just now, pay attention this time, stitchfix.com slash my brother. 
Welcome back to Fireside Chat on KMAX. With me in studio to take your calls is the dopest duo on the West Coast, Oliver Wong and Morgan Rhodes. Go ahead, caller. Hey, uh, I'm looking for a music podcast that's insightful and thoughtful, but like also helps me discover artists and albums that I've never heard of. Yeah, man. Sounds like you need to listen to Heat Rocks every week. Myself and I'm Morgan Rhodes and my co-host here, Oliver Wong, talk to influential guests about a canonical album that has changed their lives. Guests like Moby, Open Mike Eagle, talk about albums by Prince, Joni Mitchell, and so much more. Yo, what's that show called again? Heat Rocks, deep dives into hot records. Every Thursday on Maximum Fun. Y'all want a... Hold on, computer's being weirdly slow for a second. Okay, I think it's better now. Yeah. <laughs> I want a munch. Squaw. I want a munch. There's hope for the munch squad still. I thought it was winding down, but then I remembered that, you know, it's not just about current players in the fast casual market. We got new people lining up to join every single well, not day. That's ridiculous. No, that would be, would be weird. so shitty. Can you imagine? Here's a quick fact. A Carl Jr. slash Hardee's uh, Western Bacon Cheeseburger is sold uh, every 1.13 seconds. Oh, wow. That's a Munch Squad quick fact for you. About once a second, they sell one of these bad boys. They did some fries about it. <laughs> you can Google it. This isn't about them. This is about Earl of Sandwich, a fast, casual restaurant franchise. That was a wild way of saying that. I'll never be able to say that again. Franchise. Co-founded by... <laughs> what? Co-founded by a direct descendant of the actual Earl of Sandwich. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's in yeah. his blood? This restaurant, this new restaurant, is a part of the more than five-acre Fast Eddie's campus on Eagle Road, which already includes a Chevron gas station, a convenience store, a car wash, and a lube shop. The entire complex is owned and operated by local entrepreneurs Steve and Tracy Eddy, who previously built and sold a chain of fuel and convenience stores in the Treasure Valley. This is in Idaho, by the way. What if none is of this is making sense to you, it's because it's like it's all in Idaho. Here's a quote. We wanted to find a restaurant concept unlike any other in the area. And Earl of Sandwich fit the bill. Earl of Sandwich appeals to the modern consumer. Those who believe that sandwiches are more than a convenience food. Oh. They should be carefully crafted and thoroughly enjoyed. We and are, what? Said Steve. <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed. We are, <laughs> thrilled, okay. th- we are thrilled to add Earl of Sandwich to our facility and are confident it will become the sandwich of choice for everyone in the community. Hey, so just so I can get this uh, hunk of shit straight, they said that they said, they said they wanted to think of an idea that no one had ever done and like, oh, we're revolutioning the idea of, of quick service restaurants. So we went with sandwiches. Sandwich is made by a fucking king, Travis. Sandwich is made by literal, actual royalty. I've eaten at Lord Quiznos. This is one of the wildest paragraphs in the Much Quad history. The Earl of Sandwich concept revolves around the story of John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. He was a British nobleman, an avid gambler, who, not wanting to leave the card table to eat, asked for a serving of roast beef to be placed between two slices of bread so he could eat with his hands. Thus, the sandwich was born in 1762. Some 242 years later, Lord John Montague, the 11th Earl of Sandwich and direct descendant of the inventor of the sandwich, partnered with Robert Earl, not an Earl, but Robert Earl. (laughs) (laughs) Robert Earl of Earl of Sandwich. Earl, who is the founder and CEO of Planet Hollywood. What? To reclaim and reinvent the greatest of all quick food so you think for like 242 years everyone in this dude's fucking family is like can we not talk about sandwiches we did it one time we made up a snack and that's our whole fucking thing yes and then this guy's like of cheetos but this guy was like was like um 
maybe we're going to go ahead and just capitalize on this because it seems to be the best thing that we got going. I think this, the play here, you open this one in Idaho. It's not very successful, but you have a claim to the to the yeasted throne in the sense that fucking you invented the sandwich. So sorry, Subway. Sorry, Quizno. Sorry, Jimmy John. Your ass is mine now. There's no more there's no more sandwiches for you because I made them. I made well my great great granddaddy made them. But still that's copyright infringement I think. Ooh. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. nobody else can make sandwiches. You can't call them this anymore. Bread bread boats. Yeah. I don't know. They'd find some way, wouldn't they? Subway would be like anyway. we're serving we're serving them in between two butt cheeks. Get on over to Subway now, baby. <laughs> Do you think that the, the when Do you eat fo- ass? It's a five dollar <laughs> ass. Come on, five dollar foot ass. Get in it. <laughs> Do you think when John Montague showed up at Sorry, this chain, Lord John Montague, Lord John Montague, the eleventh Earl of Sandwich, showed up at this chain? He was like, "Uh huh, good, good." The Earl's Club, I love that. The original seventeen sixty two with roasted beef. They say roasted beef. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> French dip, very good. The holiday turkey. Does this one have cornbread stuffing on it? Excellent. A delicious sandwich. You've done my family. Pre- Wait. Wait a minute. Is that is that a quinoa chicken salad? <laughs> a, a, a salad with what is this quinoa? I think it's quinoa. It's a salad, just a regular. And he just starts flipping like bowls of salad out of the ground. Is this what's this over here? Pepperoni pizza bread? <laughs> Macaroni and cheese? No. <laughs> get it all out. It all is not it. But- two slices. I cannot eat it with my hands. Chips and potatoes. <laughs> out. <laughs> Maybe salad. perhaps the chipped potatoes were between two slices of bread. This potato salad claims to be salad, but it is it has no bearing. <laughs> I'm just saying this all looks really good, and I'm pretty hungry right now. I did kind of like that holiday turkey with the cornbread stuff. Yeah, that sounds promising. This all looks really good. Um, How about a Yahoo? Yep. This one was sent in by, uh, also by Graham Roebuck. Thank you, Graham. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user. I'm going to call uh, Beverly asks, how can I talk my dad into letting me have a 175-gallon aquarium? Mm. I don't know how big that is. (sighs) I don't know how big that is. You know how when you're a kid, you had like a gallon of water and you like poured it into the like a a pool or a bathtub and it was fucking nothing. Like, I don't know how big 175 gallons is. Can you guys, can can we Google it? I I feel like that's important. Because you don't want to do that. To Griffin's point, if I picture 175 gallon jugs of water, I would Uh look at it and be like, wow, that's a lot of water. Right. But I. Right. I do have a strong, strong suspicion <laughs> that if you showed me one container that could contain 175 gallons, I'd be like, that's not nearly as big as I thought it would be. I'll tell you, boys. <laughs> I'll tell you. 175 liquid gallons is uh, 23.3941 cubic feet. Now, how fucking big is that? I don't how know big how big is, that is. I don't know how okay, big that I'm, is. I'm, I just Googled it. It's 100%, 100% coffin sized. Exactly. Perfect. On the nose. This is coffin size. Okay. And it even auto-filled. As I, as I typed it out, I Google, I typed 175 space G, and it was like Alan Fish tank. Uh, so this is a big, well, it depends. I've seen bigger fish tanks. At the aquarium, they have the one that's just like bigger than my freaking house, man. Not for home use, you haven't. You have not seen one for home use that's bigger than this bad boy. I guess it's a pretty big one. This Don't. this feels like something that you would need to have at a restaurant so kids could look at it while you waited so that's for it. your chair. Or alternatively, this is how we're trying to convince the dad, right? Yes. We're trying to get daddy right. on board. So to get daddy on board, you can say, yeah, it's a big fish tank, but we keep fresh seafood in there. And then you, every day, can be like, that one. Every that day. One. Every day. I'll eat this one. Also, think think of how versatile it is. Yes, yes, you can put fish in it, of course. Yes, you could also perhaps put a reptile in there, maybe even an amphibian, but you could also store your clothes in it. You could keep all your loose change in it. You could just buy a whole bunch of boxes of cereal and dump it all in there with milk and have it be like a big cereal trough for a party. Oh, yes, that's cool. You could, you, 
you could fill it up with mustard and a single flag and let double dare kids rummage yes, around in there. Yeah. Yes. There's so many things. Like, think about, tell your dad this. Say, dad, think about all the stupid shit you've bought that only does one thing and it was really expensive. You dumb asshole. Right. You dumb like, piece of shit. Like your uh, uh, pacemaker. Right. <laughs> and what, what do you even do with it? You know? It you don't, I can't thing. even play with it. It doesn't even do Tamagotchis. But I could fill this fish tank with Tamagotchis, Dad. Just try to Think stop about me. that, Dad. I could uh, sleep in this fish tank. I'm gonna sleep in my fish tank, Dad. This is you're not just buying me a fish tank. You're buying me a new bed. Come on, Dad. Grow up. Get a I fish think, tank finally. I think climbing inside the f- aquarium and refusing to come out is one way to make your dad buy it. <laughs> That's the a good aquarium. Way to make your dad buy anything. You go yeah. in the aquarium store, and you're like, I want this one. And he says, that is 175 too many gallons. And then you say, oh, okay. <laughs> and you climb inside, and then you say, checkmate, because he's got to buy it. You're in it. No, he's got to buy it. His son's in it. <laughs> he can't just leave you there. That's against the rules. Now, it is important. You can never get out of it, because when you do, he'll immediately return it. No, he won't. It's a right. 175 fucking gallon fish tank. Are you kidding? Like, he's going to want to get that outside of his house again? It's going to be tough enough to do it with, an, you know, a big boy inside of it. Okay, well, then let's, let's say you can't get out of it until he's gotten it home. Yeah. Can you find a mattress that would fit it? Probably. Because then it would be, like, kind of a fun, like, bed, novelty bed. <laughs> and you could just at night, at every night you take the water out. <laughs> No, that's a bad idea. No, no, that no, I'm running keep through going. All the P's and, and then Q's. What? No, you just dump all the water out, put the fish in a jug, you put your mattress in there, you sleep in there. Uh-huh. That's space saving. It's a value. It's not a good idea. You could get this and say, Daddy, let's just put one little fish in it and think of what a great treat that will be for him. Uh Daddy, I want to get this big one so we can put one fish inside, and that fish is going to be so lucky. And don't we owe it to the earth to do that for it's all you can't save the world by yourself, but you can make the you know a good situation for just one fish. That's pretty good. I like that. Alternatively, you could open up a fish fighting ring in your house and say, Daddy, we'll get 10% of the pot every time. So Okay. Now you think about it. Your dad says he wants to. He won't get you a hundred seventy-five gallon tank. Okay, Dad, you win this one. Will you get me a ten gallon tank? Oh well, yeah, of course. It's no problem. And then a few weeks later, just say like, "Hey, Dad, I'm. Uh, I need a ten gallon uh, fish tank. That's still really. You said it was fine, right? That's fine." Your dad's like, "Yeah, it's fine. Go ahead. Repeat seventeen and a half times. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, you've got ten. No, wait. You've got." 17 and a half 10 gallon fish tanks and your dad feels like an asshole because he's paying for all these like pumps and decorations and things he could save a lot of dough just doing it the right way the first time if you do the job the right way the first time Uh uh-huh and he's had to take you to the hospital a few times because of how you've tried to smash all these fish tanks together to make one big (laughs) fish tank and there's there's been cuts your dad feels like the jerk who's someone your dad respects Absolutely, entirely, completely. The, Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. You say- Oh, wait, were you talking about my dad? <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> this guy's my dad. dad. <laughs> my dad. If your dad is our dad, then you go to the aquarium store with your dad, and you just kind of almost say, like, uh, offhandedly, like, oh, yeah, I heard Mr. Bean talking about on Entertainment Tonight that if you're going to get a fish tank, the only fish tank you want to get is a 175-gallon fish tank. Yeah, my da- yeah, uh, you know, Dad, I heard this is the kind of tank that Travis Tritt owns. There you go. There it is. Travis Tritt owns this exact model. Fuck it, or, fuck it man. Get Travis Tritt to just like walk by you, behind you. Look at, that's a badass fish tank, that's man. A great, that's a great tank right there. No, that's that, a good that's tank. That's the kind for- of tank I got. That's a good tank for a great price. And I want to thank you again for shopping Travis Tritt's aquariums <laughs> and more. <laughs> Y'all come on back anytime. You're welcome. And nobody's going to give you a better deal than Travis. Hey, thanks, That's what's thanks on the for side. shopping it. Tritt it and quit it. Uh, <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> grab, grab yourself a fish tank and then get on out. I'm Tritt tanks. I'd fill that shit up with mustard, I would. <laughs> I often do. I'd let some kids double down around in there. Double dare It's always deal. a great day to be alive here at Travis Tritt's aquariums <laughs> and stuff. Okay, anyways, please move on. Travis uh, Tritt's fish and shits. 
<laughs> hey, folks, this is Travis Tripp for Travis Tripp's Fish and Shits. I just want to remind you that we are working every day to obtain the license that we need to sell fish directly to you, the consumer. <laughs> We're just weeks to months away. Our lawyers assure us from getting those special permits that will allow us to sell the finest quality fish at the finest quality prices. And please, please do not confuse this location with Travis Tritt's Fish and Chips. That is across town. Uh, both are mine, and both were poorly planned. Thank you. <laughs> now, weirdly, I worked at one during the morning and one during the night, and I won't answer any more questions about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's getting personal, folks. And yes, I still find time to make music. Don't be an asshole about it. <laughs> and I balance work and family. Okay, can we please okay. move on? Ask me about my love of fish, both retail and dining. <laughs> Everyone wants to know about the fish. But nobody asks me about the and shits. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I got CD players in here too, but that's fine. I guess you just want to talk about this. <laughs> I got back some Gatorade brand gum. It's been inspired for five years. Nobody asked me about well, yeah, it. Yeah, let's talk about these fucking stupid fish, I guess. <laughs> Tim Conway passed. I would love to talk about this complete set of dwarf VHF tapes that I got, but I can't I sell them. I can't. Mm. Guess I can't. Everybody wants to talk about Everybody the fish that I fish. can't legally God's, sell. God's wettest and worst animal. <laughs> God, I hate fish. <laughs> what have I done? Should've thought this. What have I done? I should have thought this through. How about uh, one last question? Recently, a friend and I popped into a liquor store on our way to do some thrift shopping. Um, once inside, we noticed that they had a wine tasting label. Sorry, table. And we decided to spend a few extra minutes tasting some vine. And that's when we noticed the number seven on the table. And looked around to see at least six other wine tasting tables scattered around the store. Y'all, each table had six wines available to sample, and everything else is free. My question is what is the appropriate etiquette here? What are we supposed to drink 42 wine samples? Or is there a more strategic and classy way to handle this offering? That's from Merlot's of Options. What would you do, Griffin? What I would do? Yeah. Um, I would go around, I would smell all 42 of these little cups, and I mean huff them deep. And on the 42nd one, I would accidentally snort some up my nose, and I would start coughing and have to leave because I got embarrassed. Okay, that's what Griffin would do. Justin, what would you do? That's not, let me say, let me say, that's not what I want to do. That's just what would happen. That's just what happened. I, if I went... I would uh -huh. uh, want to drink all of them because they were there, but then I would assume that I'd pick the first one up and another, like maybe a human being who worked there or a human being who knew the process better than me would say out loud, that's not what you're supposed to do, and I would melt into the floor. Yeah, like Alex Mack, sure. <sighs> mm -hmm. Right, right. You know, I love one. Uh, I think maybe just pick one of the different varietals that you want to try, like... Just the cabs, and then just sample the cabs, and then and everyone will understand that. Say, I'm just looking for high test cabs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just your best cabs, and then once you've tried them all, maybe you're kind of like, hey, listen, I've been thinking a lot about it. I think I'm I'm more of a Chardonnay man now, mm -hmm. so I would like to try your shards, see how they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you could just go brand by brand, varietal by varietal. That's cool, yeah. And then you can you can step outside and shit your pants and. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that we should necessarily endorse that course of action. No, I don't think binge drinking is a good... Do you see anything that's vaguely bucket-shaped? Is oh. there anything that looks like a bucket? Because that's 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 supposed to be spit in that. Yeah. It's supposed to be spit in that. You're not supposed to be getting a day drunk going <laughs> at the liquor store, I'm pretty sure. I think you're supposed to, if you don't drink the right one, you turn old and turn into ash and bones and stuff. Yes, yeah, so that's probably true. So that's important. Uh, you're gonna have to mix four of them to solve a riddle. Like Phil, yeah, you're find... trying to. You got a five gallon jug, and right? A three yes, gallon jug yes, yes, yes. And a hundred and seventy five gallon fish tank. Um, I mean, I would just go to the back of the store and grab a six or a bud and say, like, this is my wine, <laughs> and then I'd walk out of the store without paying. I think maybe if I owned this liquor store. I would set this up with like 42 free samples of wine. And when someone walked through, I would be like, yes, it's all free. And it's 42 samples of wine. One of the 42 is poisoned. 
Oh, that's a bad idea. Okay, but then statistically, if you want less a, than nothing, that one. If you want that a bunch of free wine, nothing. cool. Listen, that's fine. But you have to ask me about each one before you drink oh. it. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. So if you don't ask about the one that's poison, then you're the asshole. They'll right. tell you. you. Right. You could test all of them and be like, okay, I have found my favorite one. And then fucking like Ellen comes out and she's like, this is a big social prank. They're all the same wine. And this is proof about how fucking fake, fake America is. And then you're like, <gasps> Ellen, your brand has changed, changed a little bit. <laughs> Maybe Griffin should have thought of somebody else. To, and she's like, I know it's strange for me to put America and sort of their <laughs> habits and beliefs on blast, but everybody's got their noses in their phones all the time, and everybody's taking pictures of their food on Instagram, and all this wine is the same. So now you're a dumb <laughs> idiot, and... And I'm gonna dance. I'm and going to dance on out of the watch. store, and you have to watch me. I'm gonna dance and pray for the destruction of America, <laughs> which is a garbage country that I hate now. Thank you for me, Ella. <laughs> I'm gonna pray for your downfall. <laughs> <laughs> Your gods have become dust under me, Ellen. Also, Jennifer watch Lawrence is in this box. She's going to jump out and scare you, but why even bother? Why even fucking Stay bother? There, Jennifer. America was a mistake. I'm Ellen DeGeneres. It's time to dance. <laughs> <laughs> happy, happy Independence Day, everybody. This is <laughs> the worm-filled carcass of liberty. <laughs> this is my next guest and your guest. For your and your grandchildren's lives. Anyways, here's a kid who can yodel or whatever the fuck. Here's a kid who can yodel about the downfall of imperialism. <laughs> and what's anyway. our musical guest is, once again, for the 70th time in a row, it's Rise Against. <laughs> Get out here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this has been My Brother, My Brother, Me. It's an advice show for the modern era. We hope you've enjoyed yourself. We have a website. By the way, if you want to keep up on everything uh, related to our family, you can go to McElroy.Family. It's a website we made in partnership with Vox Media. You can see new episodes of our podcast, new merchandise. All of it is all there waiting for you. Uh, bean juice mugs, they're there. Oh, yeah. Merchandise, you got it. Tours, yeah, they're listed there. McElroy.Family is your one. Stop, shop, pop. That's for my dad. Oh, okay. Uh, also, speaking of tours, just want to say thank you to everybody who came out uh, for Cincinnati and Cleveland. They were both a uh, hell of a show. Uh, we had a great time. Wow. What? It was great. Sl- we slayed is what you're... No, no, no. The audience was great. We were mediocre. Uh, but the okay. audience was great. Uh, and now we're very excited. Next is Indianapolis and Nashville. And I think there are some tickets left for that. McRoy.family. Click on tours. Yeah, come on out. I want to say thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song, It's a Departure, off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Uh, it's a very good album, very good uh, song, very good person, very good uh, time that you're going to have listening to it. And also thanks to Maximum Fun. For having us on the network, you can go to MaximumFun.org, check out all the great shows there, shows like uh, uh, Switchblade, Sisters, and Story Break, and Beef and Dairy Network, and a whole lot more, all at MaximumFun.org. Uh, there's, it's time for a last question. Griffin, do you have one for me? Sure, I got one here. It was sent in by uh, Sid. Thank you, Sid. It's an anonymous Yan- Yancers user. Yancers is a really powerful name for this. I like Yancers a lot. So this is sent in by Yancers user. Well, they're anonymous, so I'm going to call them uh, Gregorins asks Yahoo. It says that. Ooh. Yahoo. If some tell me there is a new moon, what happened to the previous moon? Oh. Whoa. My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. If you're looking for a new comedy podcast, why not try the Beef and Dairy Network? It won Best Comedy at the British Podcast Awards in 2017 and 2018. Also, I love... There were no horses in this country until the the mid to late 60s. Specialist bovine arse vet. Both of his eyes are squid's eyes. Yogurt buffet. She was married 
to a bacon farmer who saved her life. Farm-raised snow leopard. Download it today. That's the Beef and Dairy Network podcast from MaximumFun.org. Also, maybe start at episode one, or weirdly, episode 36, which for some reason requires no knowledge of the rest of the show.